Let's get right to the major political news breaking overnight. Hillary Clinton tweeting out this picture of herself fist bumping with the man she has chosen to be her running mate, Virginia Senator Tim Kaine. And in making this big announcement, the campaign also tweeting out a video of Clinton and Kaine together, one in English, another in Spanish. Kaine is fluent in Spanish. Now, here are some other things that we know about Kaine. He's been a U.S. Senator since 2012. He brings national security experience to the ticket, having served on Senate Armed Services and Foreign Relations Committees. Many saying he is the safe pick. Kane uh, could also help Clinton in a key battleground state before joining the Senate. He was governor of Virginia. And he may also help Clinton appeal to blue collar men, an area of weakness for her. Kane was raised in Kansas City, where his father owned a metalworking shop. And Clinton will formally introduce her running mate to the nation at an event later today in the key state of Florida. Meantime, Donald Trump already weighing in. We do have team coverage this morning, and we start with ABC's Cecilia Vega in Miami. Good morning, Cecilia. Good morning, Paula. That joint appearance takes place right here in this hall behind me. You know, in selecting Tim Kaine, many say that Clinton ended up going with the safe choice in a running mate. And while she says that he's genuinely a nice guy, she also says he is no one's punching bag. Hillary's ready to make history. This morning, one of the biggest secrets in politics is finally out. Hillary Clinton tweeting the news in this video. We've been through tough times as a nation, but we are tough people. Clinton saying, I'm thrilled to announce my running mate, Tim Kaine, a man who's devoted his life to fighting for others. Before the big announcement during a stop in Tampa, no mention of the Virginia senator. Well, I think after the last week, what we saw in Cleveland, we'd better be ready to go win an election in November. But aides say Kane beat out 23 contenders, Clinton inviting him to her home, where he also met with former President Bill Clinton and their daughter Chelsea. Ultimately, sources say Clinton liked their chemistry. Thank you. Kane brings other pluses too. A Spanish speaker. Estamos listos para Hillary. Estamos listos. He could also help Clinton win white male voters. His home state of Virginia, a key battleground. And from his years in the Senate, he brings the national security and foreign policy experience Clinton wanted. Are we ready for Hillary? And this morning, Donald Trump already has a nickname for the ticket Crooked Hillary and Corrupt Kane. And Kane has a name for himself, too. He calls himself boring. He admits he's not the most dynamic, energized political personality out there, but that doesn't seem to bother Hillary Clinton. Guys, I want to show you a first look at the clinton Kane ticket. That photo we've got there is a sign of their names together for the first time. That's the stage where they will be appearing in just a few hours. Dan, Hillary Clinton says one of the things that she likes about Tim Kane in his entire political career, he has never lost an election. Yeah, well, he's got a big test coming up in November. We'll see how that goes. Cecilia, thank you. Let's bring in two more key members of our political dream team, ABC's political analyst, Matt Town, and our chief White House correspondent, John Carl. Gentlemen, good morning. Thanks for being with us on a Saturday morning. Matt, let's start with you. Smart pick for Hillary Clinton. What are the pros and cons here of Tim Kaine? I, I think it is a smart pick. I think if you want to draw a contrast between the, what the Democrats say about the Republicans, which is risky, to strong and steady and safe, that... Tim Kaine is a perfect pick for that. The only, I think, one of the downsides, or the only downside is, is that it doesn't rev up the sort of Bernie Sanders folks. I think they're going to be disappointed. I think Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine have to figure out how to create enthusiasm in the course of that. But I think in the end, I think it's a good pick. He's a moderate, not a liberal. Uh, John, let me ask you about another potential liability here. Donald Trump already making hay about this yeah. pick. He tweeted overnight, quote, is it the same Kane that took hundreds of thousands of dollars in gifts while governor of Virginia and didn't get indicted? Well, Bob M. did. Bob M. is a reference to Bob McDonald, a former Republican governor who got indicted for taking improper gifts. So does Kane have an ethical liability here? Well, this they will hammer him over and over about this. They're, they're look. What happened here is Virginia's got really lax laws about accepting gifts. So he has disclosed accepting $160,000 in gifts. But they're not like Rolex watches like in the case of, of the McDonald case. A lot of these are political travel. 
that he got reimbursed for, including travel for President Obama during the last campaign. Um, there was a, you know, somebody invited him down to the Caribbean and he stayed in the house. But these, there's no law breaking, no, no allegations of any law breaking. And, um, you know, he's got a pretty clean ethical record. We're going to hear a lot about it nonetheless. Matt, while we're on the subject of Donald Trump, he held an interesting news conference <laughs> yesterday. After giving his big convention speech, he lashed out not at Hillary Clinton, but at Ted Cruz. Let's take a listen. I like Ted. He's fine. Again, I don't want his endorsement. If he gives it, I will not accept it, just so you understand. Yeah! If he gives it, I will, I will not accept it. Won't matter. Smart politics or <laughs> divert? I tell you, any time Donald Trump starts with, I like you and it's fine, you know what's coming next, <laughs> which is a knife that you're about to get. Yeah. Um, I think this is just a purely another example of Donald Trump his inability to stay disciplined and stay in a structure. He gave a, a teleprompted speech that went along at a long while, very direct to camera, very well, well, well done for a lot of the Republicans, and then he goes off in this diversion. But one thing we've learned about Donald Trump, it doesn't seem to matter. He seems to be able to do these things and stay very tight in a very competitive race with Hillary Clinton. Time and time again, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't seem to matter. It's interesting. And John, let me ask you one last question, this time about the Democrats. Yeah. Tell us about these emails that were released by WikiLeaks hundreds and thousands of emails uh, with Democratic officials making fun of the presidential run of Bernie Sanders. Yeah, this is perfect timing, isn't it? 20,000 right. emails that, that got uh, hacked into Russian hackers put out by WikiLeaks. Uh, these, this is a very bad timing. The big problem here is you see the Democratic chairman, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, and her top aides basically ridiculing Bernie Sanders and making it clear what side they were on during that primary. I wouldn't be surprised to see her as a result booed when she takes the stage uh, in Philadelphia by the Sanders supporters. Right on the eve of the Democratic National Convention in Philadelphia, where both of you will be this week. Thank you for getting up early on a Saturday morning, gentlemen. Yeah. We really appreciate it. I want to remind everybody, we're going to be bringing you Clinton and Kane's first appearance together as the Democratic ticket today at noon Eastern. Plus, don't miss our convention coverage all week long, starting Monday, right here on ABC.